What's up, guys? Brett Okamoto with UFC 284 coverage here with UFC welterweight Randy Brown, who takes on Jack De La Maddalena. And I, dude, I, I don't want to ask you to just repeat yourself, but we just had a pretty interesting conversation off camera, and it was uh, it was a trek to get over. Oh, yeah. I mean, Perth is not too close to your your home state of uh, New York, right? Is where you live in. Yeah, it's a little bit of a of a, of a trip, huh? Like, how yeah. was the uh, the travel coming over? Travel was tough, man. It was far. It was far. You know, we. We got up in the air, went to Dallas. Once we got to Dallas, we had a little bit of, you know, issues with the weather. Mm-hmm. I was on the tarmac for about 10 hours, you know. Then got up in the air, they had to land again because uh, they had to de-ice the plane and they were going over regulation time that they could be up in the air, I guess. So they put us back down in New Zealand, <laughs> de-iced the plane. I was on the tarmac again for another yeah. five hours. Yeah. Then we went to, then we went to uh, Melbourne and then from Melbourne to Perth. You never want the plane to land somewhere where it wasn't supposed Most to, to land, go. right? I mean, if you're going to Perth and it lands in New Zealand, like, that's, that's not what you want. No, not at all, <laughs> not at all. Especially these long flights, five hours, 16 hours, you know, then another five-hour flight. Yeah. That's bad enough. But then the times in between, 10 hours yeah. on the tarmac. I'd rather be in the airport at that point. For sure. <laughs> uh, well, you fought in Brazil with mm-hmm. UFC. But other than that, like, have you traveled much? Or is this, like, kind of your first experience with flights of that length? Um, Brazil was, what, nine, ten hours or something, something like that? Like, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, pretty much this is the longest. Yeah. You know, but good thing is we came out here way early, you know, super early. Came out here probably, what, we left on the 30th, got here on the, the 1st or the 2nd or something like that. So, yeah. When chilling. the UFC first brought you this fight, did you like it? Did you like the opponent? Did you like the, the location? Or was it, like, eh, you had to think about it for a little bit? I did have to think about it. But here's the thing. You want these, these opportunities, and you want to fight, and you want to make some noise, and you got to make a stamp, right? And the, other way, and you know, the only way to do that, I think, is to take on these young prospects. You know what I mean? Show them, like, hey, I'm here. I'm willing to go out, you know, in, in enemy territory and, and get the job done, you know? I can't really just sit, rest on my morals of what I've done, you know what I mean, and kind of pick and choose. I'm a guy that's never really done that, and I know what needed to be done. You know, so it's, with him coming up, it's like shiny new toy. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But I've been here and I've been doing this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So um, I need to remind people. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and what you're what you're articulating is is interesting, man. Because it's like, does does sometimes, like you said, you don't really pick and choose guys. But do you? Is it hard not to like have some sort of ego and just be like, man, you're you're you're, you're promoting this guy. Like this this is his hometown. You know, he beats me. I've been around for a long long time. Like you kind of know like what why the match is being made I suppose like Mm -hmm. is there is there some kind of like on do you have to like address that in your own head not necessarily I don't really care about I'm not really much of an egotistical guy you know Mm -hmm. what I mean um for me I know what it is business you know I know what needed to be done in order to put me here and whatever I need to do in order to move forward in my career and get to where I know I should be Mm -hmm. um I'm gonna do that and you already know how it is Twice, you got to be twice as good sometimes, you know what I mean? You got to be as twice as good as the other guy sometimes. Shit ain't fair, yeah. you know, so you got to work twice as hard, and then that's what we're doing. Are you impressed with this guy? Absolutely, absolutely. He's tremendous. He's a good fighter. Southpaw, no tell on the punches, clean, clean, sharp, like the way he moves his head off the line and fire back. He's a dog. He's in the pocket. He's coming forward. You know, he's coming to fight. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's nothing I've ever seen. I've never seen. I've seen this guy in the gym a million times. I've competed against guys like this a million times. Uh, but he's never seen me. Yeah. You know, what they see is what they see on the, when I fight. They watch and they say, oh, I can beat this guy. Oh, look, look at this. But it's different when you're in there, mm-hmm. you know? And I know he doesn't have anyone like me in the gym, you know? You can have a tall guy in the gym, but no one as dynamic as me. Is that what you think is going to surprise him the most? Just like uh, kind of what the, the, the range and, and, and the length is, is that what you're thinking? Not necessarily. I mean, that's the obvious thing, you know, so yes, because that's obvious, but there's other things. Um, just how dynamic I can be, you know, and how, how much I can, I can do a, a lot of other things. People don't realize how much I can do, you know what I mean? I'm super well, well-rounded, you know, and it's just a matter of me going out there and being um, in my best, at my best, you know, and that's it. You said, uh, you know, take opportunities like this to get where you should be. Mm-hmm. Where should you be right now in the UFC? Um, I think I should be fighting a ranked opponent, you know. I think so, you know, but would, would you say so? You won six of your last seven, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, but again, 
these are opportunities that you have to take and risks that you have to take sometimes to get where you want to go. You know, so I get it. I came to his hometown, you know what I mean? Fighting a guy that's behind me in the rankings, you know. Um, everyone wants to fight up, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do, like I said, to move forward. And I, I assume I beat this guy. My next fight is in the top 10. Yeah. You know, that has to be. It's your 15th fight in the UFC, which I was saying again, we were having a little talk before the interview. I mean, I, I feel that I, I knew you weren't, you didn't come in yesterday, but it didn't feel like you had been here for seven years, honestly, <laughs> yeah, man. Time is I, yeah, I mean, how do you feel about those seven years? Do you, like, I know you said you should be fighting a ranked opponent, mm -hmm. but when you look at, like, I've been in the UFC for seven years, like, what, what do you have to, like, how do, how do you feel about those seven years? I, well, I just attest that to um, consistency, man, you know, and, and there's been, mis I wouldn't exchange it for anything, you know what I mean? Here's why. Um, experiences, man, I've learned. I've done things wrong, you know, I've done things right, and I've learned myself, I've grown bigger, I've, I've adapted my training, and I've just, every single experience has led me to this moment right now, you know what I mean? I've never changed it. I've had moments, fights, I had never made an excuse. There were fights that I knew, I'm like, man, I should, I should, I should have 100% beat that guy, you know what I mean, 100%, <laughs> but there's things that happens backstage, you know, weight cuts and all this stuff that I just didn't understand, and I had to learn. You know, so I was learning on the job. I always talk about that, how much I've learned on the job. When I came to UFC, I wasn't ready, mm -hmm. right? Six and oh, I thought I could beat anybody in the world. They just tossed me in there, right? But I learned, and I'm happy with the path that I received because a lot of guys got the, they got the smooth path of where they're at now, yeah. right? You know what I mean? I fought the hard fights, I fought, and it built me and gave me my skills and my, where I'm at now, you know what I mean? My coach always says, you know, you don't want to be a big fish in a small pond. You got to get out there, get out there with those sharks and those in the ocean, get out there in the ocean. And, you know, I'm an ocean fish now. You know what I mean? Now, now I'm part of that ocean, you know? Yeah. So um, I feel good. I feel good. And I feel like I'm where I should be. I don't regret anything. Yeah. yeah. What would you say is like the biggest thing that needs to happen over the next year for you to crack, crack that 15, crack that 10, crack that five? What is the biggest thing that needs to happen? The biggest, well, the test that's in front of me right now. I need to pass this test. You know, I need to beat this young kid. And then the next one, we'll see what happens, you know. What I know I need to do is beat this guy that's in front of me. I beat him. The sky's the limit after that. Because mm -hmm. I'm undeniable after that. Yeah, yeah. And in interviews, you know, you're pretty uh, straightforward. You're kind of, like, soft-spoken. Obviously, you're not, like, a trash talk or anything. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of uh, character, though, and swag when you walk to, <laughs> to the cage. What do you think it's going to be like walking to the cage on Sunday morning with uh, all these Aussies, you know, I would assume... You know, we're in Perth, yeah. like, hoping that you lose. How, how, how do you think that's, that's going to feel? Um, I don't care. They can't, they, listen, Brett, they can't fight for him. Mm -hmm. They can't fight for him, right? At the end of the day, listen, uh, Eric Montano in Hildago, Texas, right? Border of Mexico, you know what I mean? Enemy territory. Um, Brian Barberina in, uh, in what, North Carolina, yeah. enemy territory. Uh, Wally Alves in... Uh, in, in Brazil, yep. you know what I mean? Mickey Gall, which had all the hype. We're both from New York, but yeah. he had all the hype. You know what I mean? I was the lesser known guy. Yeah. So I was in enemy territory, you know what I mean? So they all got smacked, <laughs> you know, they all got clapped. So honestly, it's just, I'm not really worried about the crowd. I just show up and do me as long as I can implement my game plan and I can do what I need to do and what I do in the gym and what I, that they can't help. The moment, everything else is glitz and glams. We could be on, we could be on the moon we mm -hmm. could be in my backyard. Mm -hmm. We could be anywhere in the world. It's not gonna, if I'm, my body is physically capable, we're gonna give them hell. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. Last thing for you, um, like I mentioned, six and one in your last seven fights. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that's, that's clicked over that time? Or is it just like you said, like having the experience now and settling in, like maturity? Uh, what, what has clicked over these last seven fights? What's clicked is understanding how I can control fights. You know, I've, I have a knack for controlling fights. You look at these guys and they've, they put two guys together and they're killers and they go out, they have this bloody war and it's like, oh, these guys are crazy. And then you put me in front of one of those killers, right? And they look like a baby. They came and touch me sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. And how does that happen? It's just, I've learned myself. I have a skill set that I think is very unique, you know? And it gives a lot of people a tough time because I kind of just snake charm them a little bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Man, well, I can't wait for this fight, dude. I think that, I think a lot of people are looking at the main card, saying like, "This is the fight that they, sure. they could really jump out." So absolutely, I'm glad that uh, despite the travel problems, you made it to Perth, and looking <laughs> yeah. forward to Sunday morning, man. Thank yeah, you for man. sitting down with us. Good Thank luck. you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.
Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.